So by now you all seen the images of monks walking through Thailand. Just go from one house to the next. They have their alms bowl, they're walking barefoot, and again they're doing alms round. And you've seen that. But what is actually in the bowl and what do monks eat? That's the question and that's what we're going to answer today. So for me, I wanted to, instead of just talking about it, I wanted to show you uh, exactly what we ate for the last seven days. So I'll be showing that to you. But before we do that, there's a few concepts that uh, we need to understand in order to get the proper context. So the first one is really a bhikkhu. And what that means in the Pali language is one who lives off alms. So what that means is that our duty as a monk is that every single morning, this is how we make our living. We go out from one house to the next, and then we collect alms from the lay people. So it's actually a duty of the monk to do this. And it keeps us, again, connected, close to the lay people, uh, but yet still having some distance, but it gives us that interaction. Uh, the second part is that monks and the lay people in Buddhism, it's a symbiotic relationship. What that means is that working or living in the physical world is difficult. You gotta earn a living, you gotta cook, you gotta clean, you gotta do all these things to sustain. And then also to develop a spiritual practice that takes a lot of time as well. So in Buddhism, uh, they split it. Split it in that the lay people really support the monks with the material needs uh, financially. Uh, they cook for them, they offer food, and then again, with the monks, we have a duty to really train ourselves to keep our 220, uh, 227 precepts, to really train our mind and to really purify ourselves, be a role model. And through that meditation, through that training, then for us is go into the spiritual world, develop that wisdom, and then bring it out to the lay people. And then we teach that. So again, it's a spiritual world. Um, mixed with the physical world and it's a symbiotic relationship again meaning that it sustains, it supports and it helps one another and both party wins so this is just the design of it and this is how uh, Buddhism uh, sustains itself the third concept we need to understand is merit making so in Buddhism uh, we believe that giving uh, acts of generosity is very important because it trains a person to let go of ego it trains them to let go of greed and this is one way that the people can make merit by every single morning the first thing they do is they cook they offer to the monks and again with giving we train the people where you should give with good intention peer intention the item that you're giving is also peer and then you're giving to a person who is peer so that's why in Buddhism, they choose to give to monks. Um, because again, by offering this act of generosity, they develop this merit. That's what we call it here, but you can call it peer energy. And this peer energy sustains them in this lifetime. It brings them good luck, it brings them good fortune. And then also they get to carry this peer energy to their next life. They get to share it with the people who passed away and this is just a good peer energy that they get to collect and also then through this act of generosity like i said it purifies their mind and it's another opportunity opportunity for them to let go of ego and to let go of greed so when you understand this context now we can go into the real question of what do monks eat so then to answer that question what monks eat is what we're offered so simply put, whatever they put in our bowl is what we take. And for us as monks, we train ourselves where we're not choosy. We're not picky. We don't go into the bowl and we don't request, hey, I want this or I want that. But no, we collect alms, we put our head down, and we just be mindful and just eat what is given to us and out of gratitude. Because we understand for monks is the food is not for pleasure, it's not for joy, it's not for taste, but really is when you understand it, use it to just simply sustain your body. So again, anything they put in the bowl, it's just another practice for us. And we're so grateful because 
through this uh, generosity and through the support of the lay people, we get to sustain ourselves. We get another day where we get to cultivate our purity. We get to do our meditation and develop wisdom. And again, that's what we want to give to the world. So without further ado, everyone out there has their own belief system. You have things that you enjoy, what you like to eat. And for me, I just want to say for this, this little moment is just put your um, ideas to the side and really just understand the context. We're here at the Papaya Meditation Retreat uh, in a village where it's very small. Uh, the people don't have much, but again, they're just offering the best that they have. And for us as monks, we're just truly grateful. So again, here's what we have been eating for the last seven days, so I hope you enjoy. So the very first thing we do once we come back from alms round is that we pour everything we have in the bag out onto the table. Uh, we start to separate all the food, uh, the main dish onto one tray. We have the rice on a different tray. And then lastly, we have all the fruit on a third tray. And this way it's spread out. It's easy for us to see everything and then we can share it all as a community. The main focus of this meal is called katom. This is a rice porridge. It's very hot. It's very plain. So what they typically do is that they have a lot of side ingredients, a lot of side dishes that they put into it uh, to add more flavor. So you see that they have this salty egg with dried shrimp. It has many different flavors. It's sour, it's salty, it's spicy, and that's just very normal in Thailand. We have fried Chinese sausage, along with green string beans, stir fried with eggs. This here is a sweet side dish. We also have sticky rice. This is sour pickled cabbage or lettuce, and of course, a glass of water. Here we have green beans stir fried with pork. We have a fried egg. We also have boiled bamboo shoot along with a spicy sauce. This is rambutan and the best part of Thailand is that they always have fresh fruit. This is a dragon fruit. We have of course sticky rice. Can't forget the water. And then also a very special dish known in Thailand. It's called khao soi. So it's just a local northern food and it's a curry noodle soup. The pepper that you see on here is actually very dangerous and probably one of the spiciest thing I've ever tasted. So be very careful. This is our meal for day number three. Uh, it consists of an egg noodle with barbecue pork. Very delicious. We have a fish cake and also some fried meat along with some fresh green beans and some cucumber uh, this is the sauce that goes on the side of the vegetables we have a banana an apple sticky rice this right here is baked banana and it's very delicious and of course we can't forget our water this is a dish called lap and it's just minced meat uh, with different spices, very spicy, very salty, very sour, just very flavorful. We have a side of cucumber with some steamed vegetables and some sauce on the side, again, very spicy. Uh, we have uh, pork on a skewer and this they call mu bing and it's very popular here uh, all throughout Thailand. You also have fried fish. We have uh, bamboo shoot noodles with a side of eggs. It's mango season right now, so mangoes here are just endless. Very delicious, very flavorful. We have a banana. And then this is a rice dessert with sweet yellow beans inside. 
Uh, day five consists of glass noodles with a side of chicken. Uh, we have a fried chicken. We have on the left hand side, it's called nam. It's um, fermented pork, I believe. We have here green string beans, stir fried with edamame. We have fried Chinese sausage and a boiled egg. So this is the dragon fruit I was sharing earlier, and this is what it looks like on the inside. We have steamed peanuts, some rambutan, and a side of soup. I believe that is squash uh, with some meat. Day six, the main dish here is fried fish. We have a small green Thai eggplant. We have minced meat that has been stirred fry. Typically we put it over steamed rice. This is just a spicy sauce that again, we can put on our steamed rice or any of the meat dish. This is called nam. And also I believe that is some kind of chicken on top uh, with some steamed rice. We have baked bananas, mangoes, and fresh papaya. And last meal of the week, we have in the center just some saute mushrooms. We have some fresh string green beans, side of sausages, and they call it sai ua here in Thailand. We also have some pork grinds, and also I believe that is pork uh, that has been fried on a skewer. For the fruit, we have rambutan, we have a banana, we have the typical mango, steamed rice our glass of water, and we always get this dish. It's just random, mysterious meat wrapped up in a banana leaf, but typically it has different types of meat inside, and they call this ho mok, so it's just steamed uh, meat. Yeah, and this one I believe is chicken, but typically it comes in all types of flavor, chicken, pork, or beef. There you have it, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you for watching and for anyone out there, if you have an opportunity to offer to the monks to practice generosity, please take it and please continue to do it. And thank you for watching and have a good day.